Thank you for listening to the Fantasy Writers Toolshed. If you'd like to join our writing community on Discord and get access to fantasy writing classes and books on Patreon, check the links in the description. And if you don't want to miss any future episodes, be sure to follow or subscribe. And to support the show, leave a quick rating on Spotify or iTunes and share this episode on social media or with anyone who you think may be interested. Thank you very much for listening. Enjoy the show. This is a paid advertisement by Fictionary. Fictionary is a tool that offers writers a structured approach to editing. It was created by best-selling author Christina Stanley and was designed using her knowledge and insights. Let's face it, not many writers enjoy editing. It can be laborious and with so much to analyze and consider, it can be tough to get right to. Fictionary seeks to tackle these problems. After you upload your manuscript and enter the details of your scenes and chapters and the nature of your book, it will present you with graphics and overviews that analyse your story. It breaks down things like character arcs, story arcs, and it can measure the development of your story compared to what would be expected by other readers in the genre. Fictionary also offers the opportunity to get key developmental help with your stories, and this can help you adjust and tweak the structure so that it flows like a river. It takes you through a very simple process uh, that guides you through um, the process of building your story up layer by layer. It can help beginner writers and it can also help experienced writers too, which makes it a very unique and useful tool. I've used the tool myself and I found the visual overviews and the analysis very helpful indeed. Um, the more time you spend using the two, the more familiar you become with its analytical functions, and that will see you get the very, very best results. So if you're looking for more advanced support with your editing, but you don't quite have the budget for an editor, try Fictionary. It's uh, free for 14 days, and you don't have to enter any credit card information to get that trial. And also as a very special offer to listeners of the Fantasy Writers Toolshed, you can get 25% off the first six months of your monthly subscription or six months off the first year of your annual subscription. The code is FWT25 and you can head to fictionary.co forward slash FWT to find out more. Thank you for listening to the Fantasy Writers Toolshed. I'm your host, Richie Billing, and today I am delighted to be joined by the brilliant cartographers, Zachary and Eric, also known as Tyndall Doodle and Dread Maps on Discord and Patreon. Guys, welcome to the show. Hello. Nice to be here. Thanks for having us. Yeah, for sure. Thank uh, you. Thank you very much for joining me. I've been excited to chat with people just like yourselves. Um all about maps just for a, for a really long time to be honest because as you both know they play such a huge role not just in the fantasy and sci-fi genres but with things like D D campaigns and gaming as well um but being writers um uh, we don't always know an awful lot about maps nor can we like design and draw them very well <laughs> so uh, that's what we wanted to cover here today, um, as well as discussing like map making platforms that you guys both use in Carnet, um, which is an amazing thing. I've used it myself; it's fantastic. Um, so I think the best place to start is um, with you guys. How how did you both get into making maps, and uh, what what's your story? Tell us all about you. You can go first. All right, thank <laughs> you. Yeah, so. Pre-COVID, I played a lot in person and I was into like painting and miniatures for a little bit. And then COVID happened and all that kind of world evaporated, right? And I have all this creative energy all the time. So um, I had used Incarnate in the past. It was a very simple thing to use um, way long time ago. It only did regional maps, I think, at the time. And when I revisited it, I'm like, oh man, I'm going to see what this is about again they had a battle map feature right so i got really into that and uh after i got to a certain skill level i was like you know what i'm gonna try to see if other people would like 
to use um, my maps as well. And, uh, but initially it was for my own use. Like I was spending hours scouring the internet for like a very specific battle map. Right. And I was like, you know what? I'm spending like three hours looking for a map. Why don't I just try to make one? Because I am yeah. like an artist. I've been an artist my whole life. Um, not necessarily in the TTR uh, PG space, but just artists in general. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to try it. And I haven't looked back since. And it's been a great experience meeting, you know, a community of creative people and just kind of collaborating with them. And it's it's been awesome. So Nice. How about you, Zachary? Yeah, yeah it, it would actually be fairly similar. Like before, like pre-COVID, I played a lot of D&D and other RPGs in person. And then once it all just, you know, came crashing down in person and you know the, the one group that I had that was, you know, we, we've been together for a while, moved online. I was like, oh, no, what do I do? Um, and so first thing I did was research, you know, different uh, platforms to be able to make maps. And I had never done any digital arts ever. I've always been traditional. Like I've done like photo editing and video editing and those kind of things. I've done audio editing but never from a visual standpoint of like creating something. And so it was all completely new to me. Uh, and yeah, I, 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 I just, it's, it's the same thing as dread there where I, I was like I was taking forever to find a map and I'm like, you know what? I'll just make it myself. <laughs> and so I started and I think after about like, I don't know, three, four months of doing that, I saw it was a D and D YouTuber had put up being like, oh, looking for cartographers and, you know, it's one of those things I've always said, you know, if you don't ask, you don't get, right? And mm -hmm. so I was like, sure, yeah, look, here, here's some examples of my maps. And I only just started digitally. And, and he was like, sure, you know, that um looks fine. Let's do it. And then I started work doing that a little bit. And then after a while, um, realizing that, you know, it'd probably be worth my time more to kind of do things on my own. Um, after, I, after I, you know, started getting used to the, the, the system and the skills and building that up from a traditional standpoint into a digital standpoint um, and then starting like, you know, try to build a community after that, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was a lot of taking my traditional background, trying to put a digital for the first time ever. And then thinking, ah, sure. Look, you know, I'm going to make some money from it too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. It's so do you think your uh, having a background in art has definitely helped with the the transition to this to the digital. I mean, Dread, were you um a digital artist before this, or were you more traditional like Zachary? Um. So yeah, I've always dabbled on like you know web design in the nineties. I was like in my <laughs> teens at the time, and then that came crashing down the whole like web bubble or whatever it's called. Yeah, and uh, but I've always had that skill set, and I was always interested in digital art um and yeah it's definitely helped having an art background right because you kind of understand pers uh, perspective and lighting and you know you know yeah. when i was younger i sketched and drew a lot you know just pencil paper that sort of medium so yeah 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 it's it's a weird transition i think from that to digital but the concepts don't change it's it you know, and it's helpful to know kind of like the roles loosely of yeah. like what, how things are supposed to look in a sort of space that you're creating. And uh, part of my uh, brand is I try to bring like a lot of atmosphere and vibe into each map. So I think that's definitely helped uh, with the background um, that I have. So nice. Yeah. Like, like, it, yeah. Like my, my approach definitely has been. Um, I, I, I've always done a lot of watercolor and a lot of like acrylic painting and some oil painting and stuff. And I've, uh, and then in my photography and film background, the, the, the level of detail that I would want, right? Like I'm always paying attention to lighting and the way the composition and where things are and all that kind of stuff. And so when I do my maps, it's very like meticulous in the sense of like, I want the flooring to look real. I want the shadowing. If there's a bottle on a table, I want half of that bottle to be in shadow and half of it not. And I spent far too long. <laughs> yes, you, you can go down that rabbit hole, huh? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I remember I had a friend of mine at the very beginning when I was making the maps digitally, and he was like, um, "At what point, you know, I, I, um, 
you know, it, is it not worth it? You know, and so it, you know, there's always there's always that like the, the voice in the back of my head being like, how far is too far? But I think for me, like I think like like well, one really cool thing about like Dreads Map that I love is like like you said, the vibe and the atmosphere. It's very bold and evocative. And mine is it's a lot more. It, it's not as bold and evocative, but it's a lot more kind of like as kind of more realistic, I guess. You know, it, it, things are a bit smoother. And I like that we can use the same program and get very different vibes out of it. Um, and, and both of us spend, you know, the same amount of time doing it for two completely different looks, you know? Yeah. 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 It's think, funny because yeah. when I'm on like Reddit and wherever else I see new maps, I, I almost instantly know when it's yours. I'm like, uh, <laughs> I don't even have to look. So you've definitely done a good job at like branding yourself when I can tell whose map mm. it is without looking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, like, I, I want that smoothness, you know. Um, <laughs> but but the thing is, like, if I'm using a map, it's funny because like I like making that. But if I use a map as a DM, I often go for that bold, evocative look. <laughs> yeah. So there's a little bit of a. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, there there's a map for every situation, right? And uh, yeah. mine is definitely influenced on how I like to play um, TTRPGs, uh, and. I just kind of make maps that I'm like, this would be cool if I were to find this and want to use it. So that's exactly kind of the target I'm trying to aim at every time yeah. I create a map. Yeah, your ears have just this great pop factor to them. You know, <laughs> lovely. Yeah, thanks. It's a really good thing to keep in mind if you're making your own map. It's like, what would you want? So that's really helpful. Yeah. So I think we've spoken a lot about incarnates. Um, but for anyone who doesn't know what it is, never heard of it never used it before uh, could one of you tell us what uh all about incarnate basically and what you can use it for yeah it's i mean i, I i've used photoshop in the past and it, it to me is very similar to photoshop yeah. um as far as like if you know photoshop you'll be kind of you know a few steps ahead going into incarnate um it has that kind of you know like like digital art like kind of like platform built in um but essentially it's you know they they have a whole catalog of assets and multiple different styles. And so assets would be things, you know, like tables, chairs, bottles, uh, walls, all kinds of things, right? And so uh, from the base level, you can just place them on a map. Uh, you can arrange them so it looks nice. Um, but then you can also then start building up new things, right? Stacking them and moving them around. Um, you can make things look broken or whatever you want. So there's a whole array of assets that you can use and they're always adding new ones. Yeah. Um, and then you have on top of that, you can go down the rabbit hole of, um, you know, the flooring can be blended and like almost like, you know, like brush with like a brush feature and stuff. Uh, um, and then lighting can be added and all kinds of stuff. So it, it's a way to like, you know, layer by layer add in um, a whole bunch of assets and a whole bunch of different things uh, that I think, I, I'm sure you think, Jared, but I think from, the 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 from a base level of getting into it is quite simple and then yes. the more you get into it it gets more complicated yeah it's <laughs> probably an infinite rabbit hole uh, yeah. <laughs> but the initial usage of it is really easy You're like oh, i'm gonna click this chair and put it here and then like make some walls and that's a room and then put a rug there underneath and then like you right that's as yeah. easy as it can be or you like uh, td and i do we we get into the lighting and then we get into the vibe and then we get you know how how crazy can you get with it? I think, you know, I do it out of principle at this point. I'm like, I want my maps to, you know, set yeah. the set themselves apart from, you know, 90% of other map makers. So I I that's the level of detail and vibe and all that stuff that I go for. But with that comes like the need to know how to do that and the mastery of the tool, which only comes with usage over time. Right. So yeah. I, you should see the first maps, which I still saved because I actually like looking at my very first map. It's really bad, but like, <laughs> I like, yeah. I like looking at it and being like, wow, I've come yeah, so far from the first map. But here's the funny thing is I made that first map for a group that I was playing with and they loved it. So like, it doesn't matter really at the end of the day, you can use it for your group and they're going to love it anyway. So. Yeah. yeah. I, I actually, the first map I made was for a YouTube channel, like for their Patreon. And I completely remade it for my own Patreon later. 
Um, and the difference is night and day, right? It was less, it was maybe a year difference apart in real time. Uh, and if you want, I can even send it over to you, Richie, you know, yeah. but like it's like, but like it, the difference is night and day between the two. And it's a little bit like shocking to see the difference, but I still use those first maps because they're functional, right? Yeah. I built them with the idea of function and the idea of usability, um, even though I didn't really know how to use the program. Yeah. And so, and I think a lot of people who are using Carnet are probably more on that level of like they're using it for the function, for the games, and then the more they use it, the more like they get into it. Yeah, it's, it's a good early stage, and you can do like battle maps for like a specific area. You can do the big world building fantasy style. You know, if you want to um, build a con, you know, your world or your continents, all that kind of stuff. There's different styles. Um, they have new things that are coming down the pipelines, like sci-fi and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff as well, uh, to kind of branch out. And it's amazing, genre. by the way. Sci-fi, <laughs> sci-fi yeah. is so good. Um, <laughs> the the artists who create these assets for us to use have just like us. They've gotten better and better with each release, and you can definitely tell the quality is just crazy now. Yeah, crazy. Nice. So yeah, yeah. And yeah. one of the benefits of Incarnus is that it's you can use it online. And you can sign up for free. Yeah, it's a free tool and you get so many assets. Like they don't give you all the assets if you don't pay for it. And even the pro, you know, the pro version is like super cheap. I don't I don't know how much it is, but it's under I think like twenty some dollars a year. So yeah, there you go. It's uh, you know, it's it's really nothing. So but it's great. If you need a quick map, you can use the free version. If you want to get more into it, you can pay for the professional one. But yeah, it's a a web browser tool you don't need to like download the software or anything it's just uh it's ready to go right out of the gate so yeah yep. i think that's probably one of the benefits of it isn't it is it that makes it so accessible i mean yes it's and yep. it's it's really like you say it's simple to use like the maps are just broken up into little cells aren't they and yeah, you just and add you, your like, assets and stuff like if that. If you're using it for any kind of RPGs, you can have your grids, you can have everything already pre done in it. Yeah. Um, even like there's been times where um if I'm starting a map, I might sketch something out and I'll just take that picture, put it up as a background, and then build on top of it. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, there's 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 a lot of really like like good features of it that you can use. Um nice. So do you guys like follow a bit of a process then whenever you make a map? I'll let you answer that one first. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, you're already so, kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like a little bit. Like usually what I would do, um, I, 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 it's the same process really for if I do traditional art. Um, like if, if if something's going to be a little bit more complicated or I'm not really sure in my head, I'll just do a few sketches on paper. And then what I do then is go into the program and block it out, you know? So I'll just take the grid, make, you know, just general like no details just colors right this is me room here room there room there blah 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 i just block it out and then i start building on top of it and building on top of it just like as if i was doing like a watercolor painting right adding more and more on top as i go um and yeah so i just start like very very basic squares circles that kind of thing and then as i do that because i'm so used to kind of building from that kind of foundation my mind i can start to see where it's going and once I get that picture in my head, it's you're running all cylinders, right? Yeah. Uh, but sometimes, yeah, yeah. And there are times where, like, if I'm like just really unsure how I want something to look, I'll just sketch it out on paper, and then upload it, and then I have that background already done. Um, but yeah, like it just depends on what I'm doing. But yeah, just start simple, build, 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 and then eventually you get to a point where it kind of starts doing itself in my own head. Nice. Are you what about you, Dred? So yeah, I'm I'm quite a little bit opposite of that. I uh, <laughs> let I let the pen just go where it wants. I do have a core idea in, up up here in my mind, and this is like ninety percent of the time. And I'll tell you when it's not. But when it's just an idea that I have, I kind of picture it in my head, and uh, n not to give too much of the secret sauce away, but um, the I always try to put something that is the most important aspect where like where your eye will naturally fall. Right. So for my last map, it's called cold fire mountain. I have this really cool, like skull with the horns and that's like central to the piece and your eye just immediately is drawn there, even though it's like a very tall, long map this way. 
Um, but I usually kind of start with the most important thing and kind of just let my creativity go where it wants. And uh, that's like 90% of the time. The other 10% is when someone comes to me and says, I drew this really crappy thing and I want a map for it. And then that's when I upload it and I kind of use that as a template. A really good example of that, um, I did a map pack for John from Tale of the Manticore, if you ever heard of that. I love that show, by the way. It's a podcast, a dark fantasy podcast, and he has voice actors and things. And there was this one episode that was really evocative uh, when you were listening to it. And the premise was the rogue of this podcast had to sneak into this um, this not not castle but like a compound and uh she was sent to assassinate the lord who lived there right and as she's sneaking through the whole pre uh the premises he's describing like the hallways and the rooms and i'm like oh man i'm gonna make that i'm gonna make that map so i actually reached out to him and i was like i really want to make this map and he's like here's a simple sketch i did i'm like thank you and <laughs> you know i just went from there so nice yeah most of the time, though, it's just m the pen hitting the paper and, you know, doing what it wants with like a very vague idea in mind. So it's nice. it's really cool to see, though, that uh, we can both execute that very differently, really yeah. well, though, too. Yeah, yeah, both, yeah. both angles. Yeah. Yeah. It just I mean, just like I, I, that's the thing. I think the program itself lends to the versatility of it. But I think it also shows that, like, you know, the map making itself is an artistic process. And yeah everybody does it differently you know like i've always been in anything that i do i'm a planner right i need to i need to like block it out and plan it and do everything else and so like even if i'm doing traditional art i'm gonna do some sketches and then i'll take a light box and then you know put it onto another sheet of paper and then go again and i'll have multiple layers of paper you know basically yeah going through and then in yeah. the end i then transferred with the light box onto watercolor paper you know like it's i'm so like everything is so meticulously planned out and that's just yeah. my style it's how i've always been and, you know? and not to say that mine you know i i sometimes box myself in because i don't plan enough like, <laughs> oh man i'm out of space over here i have to change my idea but, yeah yeah so there's, there's no right or wrong huh there's, there's no it? right or wrong you know right it's, right yeah, it's, it's just different it, oh, so I think it also comes from the fact that I'm a musician. I play the uh, drums and I'm currently, and I have been for like 20 years uh, in several bands. And the band I'm in now is kind of exploratory in the rock space. It kind of is reminiscent of like classic Santana or something like that, where we kind nice. of just explore uh, soundscapes and, and, and create our songs very naturally that way without a plan really and we record everything listen back to it and then take the best pieces and then that becomes the song that's, that's kind of cool. how i approach map making too i just kind of let nice. let uh let the energy kind of flow yeah. you know so. i i is it, 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 it's a bit of a tangent is santana now classic in the terms of like age or are you just being like by iconic because <laughs> oh because santana, if it's by age, like, no. i feel really old <laughs> like <laughs> well santana um i make that delineation because santana now is nothing compared to like what he used to be in like mm. the olden oh. days where he was in woodstock doing oh, like yeah. Real, yeah, yeah, yeah. the real rock music and not yeah, like yeah, the, yeah. I, I forget like the the more pop Latin kind of things now. So I I I, I, I have memories of me as a teenager going to buy CDs of Santana. <laughs> yeah, I mean <laughs> Santana Metallica in one trip. You know, like it was. <laughs> it's funny. My my wife this past Christmas bought me a record player, so I never had one. So I've been like re-experiencing all this like, uh, you know, uh, discovery of old older music again, and it's really cool. So, nice, lovely. nice. So we mentioned a few um a few times there, um sort of in particular battle maps. So this is a phrase that people might not have heard of before. So does someone dreads, do you wanna explain what a battle map is? And what yeah. are the benefits of having one? Because I use I map out all my battles because they are crazy scenes. God knows what the hell's going on. You've got to try and have an idea of where people are, what's going on. What's going to happen next? Yes, exactly. So, so, can you tell us all about it? Yeah. The difference between uh, a fantasy map and a battle map usually is that it's um, 
it's tactical in a sense where like everyone can see the usable space and oftentimes you're you're moving your characters in such a way to either avoid detection or fight something or accomplish a goal in mind and um it's usually more zoomed in right than a classic like world map right so you can see like there's walls here and in hallways here and as you're you know exploring the space with your characters usually through rounds or however you delineate time um you know the enemies or the people that aren't you are kind of also moving around the map and it allows everyone to envision in their minds the same space right and there's also a negative to that right because when you do theater of the mind which is a process where everyone just imagines the space it it sometimes takes away from create uh creative options because if if players don't see it on a visual map they're not going to ask about it uh so you kind of have to uh as a dungeon master you kind of have to help them uh, not kind of limit their creative options, even though they're looking at an image, right? Like, oh, like top-down maps, for example, might not show a chandelier all the time, but it might be there. So like the players can still ask, you know, is yeah. there a chandelier in this grand hall room? Because, you know, who doesn't want to swing on a chandelier or mm -hmm. do something crazy with it, right? Yeah. So it's kind of things like that that uh, help in a tactical sense when you're moving through the imaginary space because it's represented and uh players use um uh vtts which is virtual tabletops like foundry or roll 20 or owlbear or any number of them there's a million of them now but um it helps everyone you know kind of kind of agree on what is happening at any given moment when you have a visual representation so i don't know if that explains it but yeah I yeah i tried yeah. <laughs> I, I, the only thing I would add to that as well is for accessibility. Um, I know, like with my group, right? Like, um, like Momo, multiple members, you know, ADHD and those kind of things, and um, it helps keep attention, right? Yeah. And they, and also some people are more visual and some people aren't. So for those people who need something visual to be able to understand what's happening or follow what's happening or you know even just keep attention, that's also yeah. really good um and so like yeah it, it's really good for the accessibility side as well nice and all, also just the lovely side like I, I was dming at a gaming convention there in dublin a few weeks ago um that's why i still have the uh the sniffle um <laughs> and uh <laughs> i i actually printed off one of my maps and i got to like roll it out on the table nice and there was a the Ooh, you know, back there. <laughs> and like, like yeah. yeah. Really cool. and, I, and, then all, and then all of a sudden, like, people were there at the convention world, like, ooh, what's that? You know, like, coming Everyone over and having a look. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah, there's also, like, th that side as well. But, like, I, I, but, like, some battle maps like ours, really detailed, right? Down to, like, the shadowing on a bottle or a chair placed a certain way or those kind of things. But also, a battle map could just be a blank uh, sheet of, of, of a grid with, a quick sketch you know it just to get that like that mental picture of it you know yeah. and so so it's really good for 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 that side oh, yeah and uh cool. full disclosure before covid that's i would meet up with my uh group i would take some uh terrain pieces and things but it was 90 percent of uh rolling out a dry erase board grid and being like, and this is the cave, and drawing it with a dry uh, erase marker. So yeah, yeah. I have mine. My, my, mine's on the other <laughs> yeah. side of the desk there. You know, <laughs> so, like it's portable. <laughs> like you could draw anything on it. It erases easy. Like it was great for a meeting in person and doing that while also having some terrain pieces like boxes and little treasure chests and all kinds of things like that, uh, just to help. Nice. But uh, yeah. So really, I guess is what we're saying is you can play. TTRPGs in any really way you want. You can put, yeah. play it all in your mind. You can have a dry race board, or you can have a crazy detailed battle map that everyone <laughs> says, ooh, and he unrolls yeah. it. So, like, yeah. yeah. And, and from a writer's perspective as well, I know, I want to say it was Jim Butcher who does the Dresden Files series. Yeah. Um, he, he's uh, a big, so good, right? Oh, um, yeah. Like, yeah, he's a big LARPer, right? And that's what the, the when he, I, from my understanding, from like listening to him, um, that's where like his RPG system kind of came from his LARPing and everything else. Um, and 
I know there's been a lot of talk about like, you know, the main character in there kind of leveling up throughout the books. Yeah. And, totally. and, and yeah, yeah, and, and like a hundred percent. Yeah. And like, and there's been like kind of like talks in his like Q and A's of him, you know, alluding to like, you know, almost like RPG, like, you know, character sheet esque leveling up. Yeah. Um, but then also I imagine with him, because he's so big in the RPG scene, he LARPs a lot. When you listen to the descriptions of how things go, it's so close to like something you would see on like a battle map and something you would see in maps and yes. stuff. There has to be a connection there, right? Like yeah, yeah. I would I would love to like either have him sit in or like run a game, like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just be amazing, right? And yeah. also have James Marsters narrate. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 100%. I don't All know of, if yeah, those so audiobooks. Those audiobooks yeah. are just mm. Yeah, I I read the first one and then I switch over to audio and I never looked back because James Marsters is like crazy good, and yeah. made made that book really pop. You know, I I listen to them first and then I read them because oh, nice. like Spike from Buffy, like how how would you not want him to tell you the secret <laughs> of the world? Um, yeah, no, but like but like I know like he's talked about like as a writer, um, RPGs and stuff like that has helped him. His LARPing has helped him understand how people move, how people fight, how people do things, uh, how he, when he plays role-playing games, um, the encounters that they have in the role-playing play games help him as a writer. Yeah. Um, and, you know, all those things would, would go together. So, yeah, like, there, there's definitely, like, good positives from a map perspective for even writers. Um, and then we have people in a weekly uh, kind of, like, uh, group that we have uh, through Incarnate that are writers that come in and and what they're making is stuff for their books they're making uh they're making battle maps uh, so that so they can visualize things uh they're making the fantasy world maps for their books and stuff like that um so we actually have writers that show up you know to, you know most weeks that are there they're not cartographers they're not you know trying to do things so some of them have never even played D or any rpgs they're in incarnate because they're a writer and it helps them write yeah so. that's amazing yeah so we've covered a few different types of maps is there when you're thinking about the design of the map is there anything that you think is essential that anyone at home who's thinking about making a map that they should be putting in so like for example a world map you would expect some kinds of like rivers and mountains just because that's like the foundation of life <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. but um it depends what you kind of world you're making isn't it if you're making like a desert world or whatever so what, what kind of things would you think about first i think for so if it's a world map one of the basic things is think about um general geography right uh water has to come from somewhere Right, a river has to come from somewhere. It's going to come down, um, and so thinking of that side of things is really important. I think even from uh, from a fantasy map standpoint, uh, look at real life. Right, like go on Google Maps, go into the, you know a, a, and look around at places that would be similar, and then get an idea from there. Um, I lived in New Zealand for several years, and New Zealand has pretty much every biome, and you can pretty much scroll through New Zealand and find any inspiration you want for a world map. Um, so, you know, like I would think, yeah, if you're looking at world maps, start with real life, and then add the exceptions to the rule, then afterwards. Um, and then if, for battle maps, when I make battle maps, I think of both player and DM. I want things for the DM to be able to have fun toys, fun areas fun things to use also i want things for the players to be able to use um and then have options within it that there can be more stuff like you were saying dread if you can think about it it can show up you know so have things that lead to that as well when you're making the map and so yeah i i think of like you know what, what would players like uh what would dms like using elevation all that kind of stuff definitely so, so some of the things that i think about how about you yeah, so I can't really speak for world maps because I hardly ever create them, but from a battle map perspective, if it's outside and not inside a building, I'm always doing elevation changes, weird crevices, where, you know, places where the PCs would love to, like, sneak or hide or, like, get an advantage 
of some kind or, you know, a disadvantage if that's the kind of map you're running. Um, and like, for example, they have to go through a narrow pass and there's an ambush or whatever. So I can always tell, you know, beginning incarnate users because that that's what is usually lacking you know they have the foundations they got the trees and the path mm -hmm. and like the path through the woods but it's missing elevation and yeah. um even lighting can play a role uh when you create a map like that if it's inside i like to put little secret nooks and you know hidden passageways and weird things in there to like evoke and, you know, an imagination, uh, kind of like, oh, like, what's this all about? And even it lends itself to the like, a, the possible lore of a place. Um, uh, there's a very fine line, though, and I've learned this since I've started till now, where I don't want to force an idea on to whoever is using a map. I want to su be suggestive sometimes strongly, but not box them in into a, a very specific use case that I had in my head. I want to suggest things and, uh, but still allow for it to be not that. Yeah, very, options. Options. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's a very, uh, it, it's taken me a while to understand that. Uh, and I think that maybe just comes over time with, uh, when we gain mastery over the tool that it kind of lends itself to that. So. Yeah, there's a um, I don't want to mess it up. I think it's uh Jaquez, um, five is it uh? I think it's about like Jaquezing the the dungeon. Uh, there's a, a writer who's last name is Jaquez, and the idea is that um, you have like a five room dungeon, and everything should kind of like loop back in different ways, and uh, you have multiple points of entry. Um, the idea is that you know, like you can have your central point. You have the the the, the moments where everything's funneled in, or you know, your your options are limited. But to get around the map, to go in and out, and even the entry point into the map, there's options, um, and those might change as you play. You know, but right. when you build a map, you 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 build in those options. Nice. So like, nice. yeah. Well, it's a uh, really fantastic discussion so far. Um, I've got one more question for you both. What advice would you give anyone out there who is thinking about making a map for the first time? Dred, do you want to go first? Yeah, sure. I'll take this one. Um, I don't think there's really any rules, to be honest. It really depends on what you're going to use it for or what you want other people to use it for. I have my own things that I follow because that's my ethos and what I believe a good battle, uh, a battle map should be, but there's nothing wrong with just a regular old like tavern battle map. You know, there's nothing special about it. It's just a tavern who doesn't yeah. like a good tavern though. Like that's <laughs> one of the essential core pieces of fantasy is like the party meets at a tavern. Like, yeah, that's often like session one. It's often what happens after a long like battle sequence or a long travel sequence, you come to a tavern. So really um, I like putting very uh, evocative, like, points of interest on my battle map that draw the eye, but like, you don't have to do that. Um, so I just think follow your creative instincts, follow your heart. And, uh, the more you use the toll, like the more you practice art, the better you become at it. So I don't really have any roles for anyone other than what I've already said. If you're making an outdoor map, try to put elevation in it. It makes it more interesting. If you want to get more advanced with the toll, adding shadows and, you know, other things like that really help uh, set the mood and uh, evoke a s certain vibe. Uh, but, yeah, it's kind of open and just like art, you know, there's no real right or wrong way to do it. It's just kind of what you believe in in your ethos when you create. So Nice. Yeah, like I think um, for, for me, I would say um if you're thinking about starting and you don't know how to do it uh just do it right just sit down do something for the first time i've always said the only bad art is the art you don't make and you know practice makes progress right i don't think there's ever yeah. anything perfect right i think the more you practice something the better you get um and so make something that you like make something for you even if it's for somebody else right if it's for a game or something else make something that you like because if you like what you're making then the end product's gonna be better. Um, and don't if you if it's the first time doing it, don't expect perfection because no one's perfect. You know, 
because the next time you make it, you have more knowledge, you'll be better. Next time you make it, it'll be better. And you learn every time. So that's fun stuff just, anyways. Yeah, and just full disclosure, there's still mistakes and things that I don't like in every map. It's just like oh, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. the the blast radius of those things have shrunk in right? <laughs> but they're still there. And I'm like, man, but sometimes you you just have to do uh the attrition game and be like, you know, I'm I'm gonna just move on because to fix that at this point is yeah. way more work than it's worth and no one's going to uh -huh. notice but me so yeah, yeah. that's the uh, the true master in you there <laughs> it, it, what, what to say you want it um you 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 want it done not perfect yeah exactly yeah. oh nice yeah um, I've, I, that's I'll, okay. i'm sorry go ahead go on Jeff. oh i was just gonna say i i've actually had to relearn that lesson for writing because i'm trying to get into like the writing aspect of the genre now where i'm creating like one shots and adventures and things like that and nice. i've been sitting on this one for like a year and i'm just like you know what i need to just get it out there now and just let it fall where it you know let it land where it lies and um yeah move on because just like with maps you know it's not going to be perfect but someone's going to find enjoyment out of it and yep. i'll eventually learn that lesson and move on and try it again and again and again so definitely yeah Gotta try these things. That's the biggest, big, the hardest part is finishing them and getting them out there. Yes. Uh, yep. And you, who knows what happens then after that? It's worked out well for you guys, anyway, with the maps. Um. So if anyone yeah. wants to check out your your uh, your work and and to speak to you about maybe using your um building services for their own maps, I think I'm going to require as well myself when it comes to uh, getting me novella out there. Um, so go. where's the best place to look for to learn a bit more about both of you? Uh, sure, for, for me, uh, Instagram and Patreon are the main, main two. I have my stuff on Reddit and stuff like that and all the other places, but uh, Tyndall Doodle for Instagram um, and TD Maps, so Tyndall Doodle Maps for uh, for uh, Patreon. Uh, well, I'm, at the moment, I'm doing like a five month project. I'm writing a, a, a big adventure, right? Yes. Uh, and doing a community based style and having votes and those kind of things. And I'm doing my writing at the moment. And um, it's the, the big giant castle that I'm making for someone else's Kickstarter book. I can also use it at the same time. So I'm changing it up for myself and make, make my own adventure out of it. Uh, NPCs and stuff like that. And I'm commissioning some people to make art for it, and it's all going to be done as a community. And by the end, it'll be a big adventure with a big, massive castle. And then I'll have a product out of it, and people can use it, and people can have fun with it. Um, and then I'll, I'll also, speaking of uh, what you were saying there, Dread, uh, I have two different zines that I'm in the process of finishing. Uh, for for two different taverns, actually. Uh, the 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 awesome. occult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have the the uh, the one that's nearly done is the occult cup, uh, mm -hmm. and it's all like you know kitschy occulty stuff, and it's really quirky and funny, and it's based on a game of mine that I run. I've been running for like you know a year and a half, and um, nice. so all the NPCs, all the arts done, everything's done. I'm in the layout stage now, um, and so you know both physical and digital products those will be available and. Hopefully by the end of the year, I'll be doing conventions as well with physical products and digital products. So, yeah. Nice. Uh, so uh, TD Maps for Patreon and Tyndall Doodle for uh, Instagram. Awesome. And Jess? Yeah. yeah, so uh, you can find me on Patreon, Dread Maps. Uh, Linktree has all my uh, links of all kinds on there. I'm on Roll20, itch.io, uh, drive through. Pretty much anywhere where you can put a map. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm also one of those. I always forget about those. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I just try to be where the people are, right? And uh, but you can support me best on Patreon. I think um, I would really love to have you. Um, I'm always working on something new. I take uh, suggestions from my patrons who joined the uh, Discord. Um, that I have and like uh, TD was saying I'm, I'm constantly working with other creators because I feel like that's where the real power is um, shout out to my buddy at Grimwood uh, he's making his own TTRPG and uh, you know I'm kind of doing a little work for him House DM uh, has his own YouTube channel and he kind of does uh, scenario 
work and he's also making his own adventures and things and I'm helping out with that. I've also worked with Scotty from Easy D6 and Hank from Runehammer. All great dudes and um I just want to meet you if you're also a creative person and doing this in this space and I'd I'd be glad to help out. So um that's probably the takeaway here is uh and I didn't realize this at first, right? Is just I've enjoyed the most just working with other people and helping create something more than I can on my own. For sure. So, yeah. yeah. I know. That's why I love doing this podcast because I get to connect with guys like you and get to spread the word to other people. It's, uh, it's brilliant. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you yeah. very much. It's been a brilliant conversation. I've, uh, I've learned so much. Thank Can't you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, sure. and, um, <laughs> if you have any questions, reach out. <laughs> yes, links for everything uh, uh, for, for Dread and uh, Zach's uh, profiles will be in the description. Thank you very much for listening thank at you. home. And uh, thank you again, Dread and Zach. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much.